FFJ European Championship 2024 in Deva, Romania. We are now waiting for the first senior fly-off. Good two minutes to go. And these are the pilots on the line. So I think we are getting 14 pilots in this fly-off and due to the windy conditions I don't expect really really low starts. So this afternoon with windy weather it will be where the differences will be made. So I don't think it's safe to really risk a low start but still you have to kind of ensure that you are not the highest one in the group so the first 30 seconds will be very interesting and after that the guys have to stay in the air for 15 minutes which I'm confident they will be able to unless they hit a strong thing which is also a possibility here in this field so let's wait and see how the flight develops let's pick a random one Tracking still doesn't work well. Okay, so there are a couple of guys trying out in the field. That's interesting. I was expecting majority to fly to the south over the railway line. And yeah, majority of them are over the camp. guy that started to the north is now joining them. Okay. So, let's see. This should be interesting what's developing down here. Focus again. So these two guys are the lowest and the furthest out. The majority is to my left, again over the tower and the hangar area and the trees. There's just like a Good bet that some thermal will unstick in from here. You see the most of them now hanging there, but these two guys are and the interesting ones to watch, I would say, because it's either very long walk for them 
or maybe they will make it. They will make it. <coughs> so, for example, field here definitely doesn't work at the moment so I'm not sure what you can do here I would try to move elsewhere and me being the risk avoiding person I would fly out to the fields so at least I can land safely I wouldn't want to fly in the between the trees and the houses and power lines and whatnot but competition is competition So now these two guys are the most upwind and they have to wait for the next thermal to come by because everyone else is further downwind and even the guys that are far out are now having actually a very good air down there but they're really really far I think one is coming back with the motor at least that's how it looks like yeah 10 minutes to go looks like it's the German guys flying very far in the distance just let me try to show you how far so in the saddle there in between those two hills maybe occasionally you see something shining but that's out of control that's definitely out of control So I would write off that plane and focus on the flying. Oh, they gave up, so it's already somewhere in the town. And good luck finding that. So these three guys are still in the air here. And then there I see two, three planes, four, five, six, pretty high up and still in the reasonable distance downwind. So now one wonders what is a less stressful strategy to stay close and low and work constantly for 15 minutes or get blown downwind and gain some height in the process. 
and then you have issues with distance, with model visibility, uh, radio signal and whatnot. Choices, choices, choices. So this guy is pretty constant here, constantly low, working every bubble that comes by. Not sure if he'll make full time. Looks like he's giving up. Who's next? Behind the tree, it's over that house. Okay, unpleasant. And there is a flock of birds around complaining loudly. <laughs> Five minutes to go, yeah. That's gonna be tough. Okay, sounds like one's ended up in the tree and almost reached the ground. Not quite. And then the other one is almost to the points. Resisting. And I hear some servos overhead. And the others are now coming back closer and lower, getting ready for the landing. Stick with this guy for a bit longer. So at this point I would also stretch the glide to the landing points just to make sure that I get the time as a result because I'm not sure it will be enough height for what? A few more minutes of flying time that's remaining. And looks like that's what he's doing. Now flying 
downwind from me is not a good idea. Because this will be an outlanding, that's too low now. Now you get a zero. I mean, why? Why? He should have stretched his flight over the camp, but I agree this is a safer choice than landing in the middle of a camp. Okay, two minutes to go, and I think we have two, four, six planes here. I'm pretty sure most of these guys will end up on the podium. One more overhead. So we have seven that will make a full time. One minute, One minute to go. And some are still pretty far out. To add more speed, and this is still far, and there's still enough wind to ruin your landing plans. Thirty seconds. Now they're braking. Twenty seconds. Okay, nice. Nice. Two minutes to start. So while we are waiting for the second start of the or second flight of the senior fly-offs, wind is doing interesting things. So it's blowing for like five seven meters per second and then almost dies down for a few minutes and then picks up again. So looks like conditions are changing slightly. You know it's now getting what close to 5 pm in the afternoon. Shadows are getting long and it's going to be interesting to see how these top pilots will read this air now and what they will do. So 45 seconds to start and the wind is picking up again, at least where I'm standing. Because it might be slightly different where they are standing. There's plenty of flux and tapes and whatnot all over the camp to give them the idea about wind vectors. Let's see. So this is the new Explorer that Primoz is flying. I don't know what it will be named, but it goes on sale in two months. 
and it finally has much thinner airfoil. That's what I like. So initially all these planes and plane designs were derived from F3J where you actually needed a strong enough uh, main spar in the wing to withstand the stress of winch launch. So F3J never developed really thin airfoils. Now with F5J designs, air, air foils are getting thinner and thinner. And just a few hours ago I got a sensor from Vladimir Models, which is a super thin air foil. And I'm very eager to try it out in the next few weeks. Another thing I was pondering is when I first built my what was it then Stork 2E uh, with LiPo batteries. It was I don't know 2008, 9 thereabout. No, maybe even earlier. That plane was super light for the time. It was just 2.3 kilos. Nowadays, the planes that you're watching now are at their heaviest, at 2 to 2.5 kilos, full of ballast and strong build for wind and whatnot. And the planes we fly in light conditions at 1.2 kilos. I mean, how far the materials and the building know how progress. Quite amazing. So, what I'm looking at now is Primoz, who decided to start really um, upwind and is now basically the last of the group here that let itself or allowed itself to be blown downwind very far. So, I don't know how many you'll see, but there's like two, four, six, seven planes no, eight, nine planes there. And they didn't gain much height. That's not good. That's not good. So, apparently guys downwind still wants to risk it. And I would say the guys that are closer here had a better result from the first flight and are flying safe. So pretty much is definitely the closest one. And then there's a couple of planes here in the vicinity still. And then there's uh, six planes again really far downwind. I mean didn't they learn anything from the previous flight? I wouldn't go that far. I mean, going far downwind is no warranty to get a lift. There's a limitation of how far downwind is it sensible to go. But nowadays with possibility of a motor restart, I guess that's a thing that P1 
people try. Oh, now we have a flag of cloud in front of the sun. We're in the shade. And that doesn't look good for the guys here. Yep, there's Primoz, unfortunately. So he was flying too safe. Ah, there's the other thing. I'm hearing that there will be a refly. Okay. That explains things. So I thought I've heard a, like a touch. Uh, when I was focusing on him in the start, but I haven't seen anyone really coming back or anything. So I guess that they decided to continue. But if there will be a reflight, then it changes things. again to try to get the signal to their planes if the planes don't want to come back to them let's see what we can see a few pixels here and there I guess but they're again in the same general area a bit higher this time though between the cloud and there is a two of them even higher than the cloud there will be uh, plenty of outlandings Exercise of who wants to suffer the longest. But so all of these guys who are now landing out will have to make a result in the next flight in a refly. And the ones that they will make time. they won't need to or they will be able to risk much more hmm. with the sun getting low it will be interesting to see which pilots pick which tactic There is now definitely a sink. Just trying to come back. Now let's hope that he crosses the high voltage lines. It's uncomfortably close. Or at least from the angle I'm looking at it. Yeah, looks like he's in front, okay. But... 
still needs to come at least into the grass area. He'll make it safe, but... Germans are just taking bikes to fetch their planes, look at that. That's new, I haven't seen that before. Well... Good luck finding them, I guess. Okay, is anyone else flying? I don't think so. And let's wait for a refly. So we waited something like 20 minutes for all the pilots to retrieve their planes and make them flight worthy again. time wind has picked up and some clouds started to cover up the sun so whatever weak thermals were left are now even rarer I would say so now it's gonna be a real challenge and I guess it's best to track one of the best pilots around Arian. Thirty seconds. I don't expect anyone to go even remotely low. So now it's 150 to 200 meters. That's my guess. Everyone went into the wind. No one went downwind. That's interesting. So, I would say they learned their lesson. And they're still pretty close together. And the lowest one is now here, and I think this is Primoz again. Looks like yes. So it's now flying into the wind, and then maybe sideways a bit and only start turning when you're confident that you're in good air so 
so there's at least one plane that's already to my right. No, there's actually four. And there are a couple of guys really far out to the south. That's interesting. Okay, let's see if I can show that to you. Up above that small cloud. There's two guys there. And then a few more, there's now six planes here already. Two groups have formed, so six planes going downwind, hoping for the best. And seven planes that I can see persisting upwind or to the side of the to the, to the south of the camp. There are seven and then here six, I'm missing one somewhere. Okay, so... Both groups are at approximately the same height. Which means that that group there in the front is definitely in a safer position. So, only three planes that went downwind actually gained some height. Ah, there's the seventh one. Okay, so there's seven in the back too. And they're nicely spread out and they're coming back already, all of them. So even this group in the front is now slowly moving downwind. So they took their time to find something that they considered a good air. Which is very sensible right now, I would say. And they're gaining nicely, at least the ones on the top. So, who's there now, the lowest? Could be Aryan with that horizontal tail. Meanwhile, so these two groups almost merged now. And they're all here. Some closer, some further downwind to the south. There are only three planes in the front. And it looks like the fourth one is joining them. Some hungry fly around me. So what's now this guy doing? He's now the lowest. He almost looks like he's giving up.
Yep. Okay, so what's happened in the meantime? I don't see anyone left in the upwind position, so everyone is now here. And I'm pretty sure this is Aryan. Let's see what he's doing. Interestingly, he's the close, close, uh, the lowest one. One more going for landing. He's now just surfing the wave of those trees and maybe of the house. But the rest of the planes spread around again. Two, four, uh, five again going, six going upwind. One, two, three, four, five. Staying here over the airfield area, tower and the hangar, and Arian doing his tree surfing magic here. I guess if there's no thermals anymore, you have to find some other source of energy. And if you can visualize the flow of air over this, what is it, three-story house almost, and some trees there, then I guess it's, that's a good position to stick around there, because some air must be moving up there. But now almost everyone's here. No, no one is gaining anymore, they're all down. But funny enough, someone is circling just over the corridor and gaining. Who's that? He didn't gain much, but maybe that was like a precious few seconds, maybe a minute. I heard something that could be another touch again. Let's hope we won't get another refly, because that would be a bit crazy. Okay, so these two guys landed. So, what's happening here? The 
whole flock is now here. Pock. So, okay. That sounded like a refly, yeah. Broken wing tip. Still kind of controllable. Just go out to the field, yeah. Well, that's a bit difficult to fly. But two minutes to go, so <laughs> now what? It doesn't look too bad. So just apply enough uh, aileron to counter that wing tip, and uh, he'll make the time look. Landing will be a bit of a challenge. Yep. One minute to go. I don't know. Servo noises all around me. Thirty seconds. Oy, oy, what a squeak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are those servos made of? They're squeaking like a old door. Six, seven pilots got a full time now. So I'm not expecting another refly. Let's see, maybe we continue with one more flight or we continue tomorrow morning. <laughs> 